Okay, we are live now. Woo! Okay, thank you for being here. This is like awesome. Um, you don't know um, what it's been like this last year. I mean, um, I mean, Lutherans in worship are here have been like BBs in a boxcar, and um, <laughs> yeah, so it's it's nice to have like almost a full house. So I'm so grateful for that. I'm also really excited and thankful that the Sunday school because. I mean, all these things, I mean, we've just been waiting for and waiting for. So the Sunday School is with us today um, to share some songs and, and, and a skit that tells a story. So we're, I'm excited about that. And then uh, we have the chicken dinner, in case you didn't notice. Um, that'll be the, it'll be drive through on the Franklin side street. So we have that street all um, blocked off. And so that will be organized. So... I'm not sure which direction. I think you come around that way um, from the from the on the south side and go north through the system, I believe. But um, I haven't been out there yet. So um, again, I want to say thanks to everyone who has uh, made the chicken dinner this year um, successful. So um, we're looking forward to that. And so remember that today. So the chicken is is like almost ready already. So. Um, Immediately following worship, um, I would check, but I think we can start a little earlier. Um, but that's not up to me. It's up, for the, up to those in the kitchen. Also, please notice the announcement on starting the coffee hour again. We're going to do the coffee hour outside. So there's sign-ups to sponsor that. That would be awesome. A special welcome to our high school graduates today who are um, going to receive the, the blankets that are a gift from the Central Lutheran Church women, and so they spend afternoons uh, tying these blankets. So I'm going to ask the graduates to come up. So you can spy a blanket, okay? And um, you can pick your own blanket as you come up when we do the blessing. And uh, if it's not quite the one you want, you can either like trade off or you know, talk to your peers about switching or whatever it is that works for you. But um, right now, I just want you to kind of spy out your blanket as the one that you would, you would prefer. Um, just a kind of a note on where we're at is masks and distancing, is that, um, you know, with vaccines, we are able, with, with more vaccines and more people being vaccinated, we will be, we will be able to start relaxing the mask requirement um, however, we're not there yet, so we have to continue um, to, to require um, the masks in worship. And as we go forward, we'll also be changing um, our communion practice back uh, to more normal coming forward and receiving the, the Lord, the bread and wine at the, at the altar rail um, rather than having um, the pop tops in the, in the pews. So 
Um, so today, you should have, there's the, the cups that have the prepackaged communion cups. One is grape juice, and then the chalice ones are wine. So I found out that the chalice ones with wine are much easier to open um, than the grape juice ones. Just a, a note from the, from the office. Um, and so that is my announcements. The last thing I have is because this last Thursday was the day of ascension, um, and when Jesus ascended into heaven, so he was um, with the disciples on earth following the resurrection, and we've been through now the seven weeks of Easter. And so when Jesus ascended into heaven, it was now um, the disciples' um, job to proclaim the good news of Jesus as it is for us. So symbolically, we remember uh, Jesus ascending as we extinguish um, the, the Paschal candle. Amen. So let us begin our worship. So blessed be the Lord, for God has shown us favor. God has sent a Savior to deliver us from fear. God has shown us mercy and kept the ancient promise. Blessed be the Lord, for God has shown us favor. Amen. And so we confess our sins before God and one another. Risen Lord, we admit that we are slow to believe and even slower to follow where you lead us. We doubt your promise, divide your people, and fail to proclaim the power of your resurrection. We choose to live small lives when you have given us the biggest gift of all, your eternal life. Forgive us, raise us up to a place where we can serve you faithfully. Christ is arisen, bringing the gifts of life and mercy and pardon for sin. Believe that you are forgiven and go out and live in the joy of our Lord's resurrection in the power of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us sing all are welcome. Welcome, all are welcome. 
join in our litany. But through our faith, Christ has come, so that we, blessed by God, might be known as children as we were baptized into Christ. So we are clothed with Jesus' love, for we are one, bound together by Christ, sharing equally the promise made to Abraham, our brother. Now we are one. We are all one. Praise be to Christ who makes us one. So the Lord be with you. So let us pray. Lord God, the only law you demand is the law of love. And by your grace, show us the path that we are to follow, to spread your message of mercy and live lives of discipleship after your son, Jesus. Amen. And so our first reading today is from the first, Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, and it reflects the message that the Sunday school youth will be sharing with us in just a moment. And so Paul writes, and this is from Eugene Peterson's transliteration of the Bible from the message. <clears throat> but I also want you to think about how this keeps your significance from getting blown up into self-importance. For no matter how significant you are, it is only because of what you are a part of. An enormous eye or a gigantic hand wouldn't be a body, but a monster. What we have is one body with many parts, each in its proper size and in its proper place. No part is important on its own. Can you imagine I telling hand, get lost, I don't need you, or head telling foot, you're fired, your job has been phased out. You are Christ's body. That is who you are. You must never forget this. Word of God, word of life. And our focus reading is from our series from Paul's letter to the Galatians. Again, how Paul is proclaiming how faith in Jesus works. And Paul writes, For this reason, those who believed are blessed with Abraham who believed. Now, before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. And therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ, there is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. All of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abram's offspring, heirs according to the promise. We are one in Christ. We are clothed with Christ. So we welcome the Sunday School. Thank you, Diane.
pastor, right? Yeah, I mean, there's nobody more important than me. Yeah, I, awesome. Okay. <laughs> so now I got pastors important and I got Michelle and I. What do you think, Dave? What do you think? Well, let's see. see. He's the most important, support, but, but if he doesn't put it out on the radio, then they don't hear him. But we need the body of Christ, but we need music to worship, and we need people to talk to and learn about it to carry it forward. Oh boy, I don't know how to order them. I, I'm confused. Well, you know what? Let's have them solve this problem. If you think you are the most important one in this church, step to the top of the stage. That didn't help. <laughs> so, as you see it, they are all important. But you guys, we're not going to make you get up there. But you guys should all be up there. No, they can go sit down. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, pastors aren't much good without a congregation. <laughs> and uh, pastors aren't much good with, without the Word of God. So I just want to briefly go through. So if we can go to the next slide that talks about, you know, who we are as as God's people. So it all began in Abraham. And so what Paul is saying is that all the people that in the Galatian congregation, they are all one. And they are all one because there's no separation between the Jews and the Gentiles. And then there were separations between the males and the females. There were separations between the, the slave and the free people. And, and so what what Paul is saying is that, no, you are one, you are free. And it happened in Abraham. This is nothing new. It has just come to fruition and fulfillment in Jesus. Next slide. So what about the law? What can the law, what the law can and cannot do? I mean, because the law is important. It controls, it helps, it keeps good order um, the law gives us direction. The law helps us live together better. But what the law cannot do is the law cannot make us right with God. Okay? The law, although it can tell us we're sinful, the law cannot forgive us. That only comes through Jesus. So Paul talks about the law as a disciplinarian. So, especially the children... You know, your parents are sort of your disciplinarians. And believe me, in the ancient world, um, you wouldn't want one of those disciplinarians. You'd want your mom and dad, okay? Because <laughs> a disciplinarian, their job was to not really um, care and be nice to the kids. Their job was to keep them alive. So keep them out of trouble. And it didn't matter if they killed them in the process. I know that doesn't make sense, but that's kind of what Paul's image of the, of the, of the law is. The law kept and preserved, and, but it does not fulfill. Next slide. So this is what salvation in Jesus looks like. So it says, so there's no longer Jew, nor Greek, nor slave, nor free. There's no longer male or female, for you're all one in Jesus. So all those separations were collapsed down. And they had a new identity as the people of God. So, next slide. So, what faith in Jesus accomplishes? No longer divided, but called together. Bound together by the Holy Spirit. Bound together in Jesus, a community of faith. We are Jesus to the world. As we just heard, we are the church. So there's a picture. I don't know if you can notice the two white people. Um, there's me and then Bishop Laurie, uh, who was not bishop at that time. 
and we were the teachers at the Malawi Pastors Academy in Malawi in Africa. So there's a lot of differences between um, us and our hosts in Malawi. One, um, they were black, we were white. They were, for, for the most part, very poor. The average income in Malawi in 2014 was $200 a year. I mean, these pastors literally worked for a chicken and a dozen eggs, okay? Um, and they were the most incredibly brave people. So they were, we were rich, they were poor. But the one thing that, that transcended all of that was that the, our faith in Jesus together made us all one. We were all the same. You know, these guys, and, and, and in, in Malawi and Africa, there are no women pastors yet. Um, they look serious, but they are, they are the most fun uh, group to be with. And, and they are also um, very, very serious and very proud about their faith in Jesus and what they have been able to accomplish in building God's church in the, in the, amongst the people in Malawi. And so I just always remember that, that in spite of the differences and the separations that we think separate us, that, you know, um, all those voices of the law. Um, but in Jesus, we are all one together. We are the church. Amen. Let us sing. Now, you can kind of kind of let, let loose a little bit. So please stand as you're able, so in case you decide to start moving, okay? And let your little, watch Diane, do what Diane does. want to invite the high school graduates to please come forward and stand at the altar rail and um, come and get your blanket. <clears throat> so grab your blanket and hold it. Okay, he's going. So Avery and, and Peyton and, and Sydney and <clears throat> So let us then bless these graduates. We are delighted to recognize high school graduates of Central Lutheran Church today. It is our privilege to affirm these members of our congregation who have completed one phase of their lives and move with great expectations to another. So graduates, as you celebrate your achievements and prepare to begin new endeavors, be mindful of your grounding and faith and of your vocation to serve God in all your life's work and accomplishments. So let us pray. Gracious God, we bless your servants with many achievements. We give thanks especially for the milestones that these graduates have attained. As they begin new phases of their lives, may they also know your love and experience your peace in all the experiences they encounter. Bless also the parents of these students who have raised their children and nourished them in the Christian faith. Give them strength in, the, in your continuing presence and give them many joyful reunions with their sons and daughters who may be leaving home soon to begin new and varied ventures. 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So <clears throat> then receive <clears throat> these blankets as a symbol and memory of God's blessing upon you. When you feel you may be, when you feel alone, may you feel embraced by the company of God's saints of all times and all places. When you are ill, may it remind you of God's healing touch. When you are discouraged, may it remind you of God's plan for your life. And when you are tired, may it call you to rest in the arms of our Lord and Savior. Then receive these blankets as a token of this congregation's love for you and a reminder of Christ who enfolds you in his care. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us affirm these graduates with a round of applause. And you may be seated. So let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Almighty God, by grace, you, by grace alone you have delivered us. So let our proclamation, our witness, be one of freedom and not of restriction. May the witness of our lives show forth your love and not our own preoccupation with those things we think are so important. God of grace, hear our prayer and empower those who write and enact laws that your justice might rule their hearts and inspire them to protect and defend all people for the, goodness, for the good of our existence here upon this planet. God of grace, hear our prayer. And there is no division between us and them, insider and outsider, human and creature in your kingdom, O God. Unite us all under your law of love. And may it be our guiding principle as we carve out relationships of mutual benefit. God of grace, hear our prayer. And send your spirit's comfort to those who have suffered in this world from discrimination and all the different kinds of hate in the world. Heal our relationship with ourselves and others that we would no longer find it necessary to lash out in the face of difference. Mend then the broken ones and those who, those who need your healing touch, especially those we remember and, and pray for in this moment, especially as we remember Andy, Andy Johnson and Rose McConnell and all those who await you and your healing and your presence. God of grace, hear our prayer. And for all your saints in light, we give you thanks and pray that you would count us among them when you bring your final kingdom. And so, Lord, we also remember and pray our blessings upon these graduates and that you would follow them and your holy angels would always be with them. And we remember Joshua Madsen and Felicity Frank as they were married yesterday, um, the son of Sharon Bornflath and to re rejoice with Greg and M Melissa Fratt, who were married and affirmed their vows here yesterday, and to celebrate with Randy and Kay Rusted on their anniversary they celebrated this week. So, Lord, be with them and bless them all. God of grace, hear our prayers. So incline your ear to our prayers and fill us with power to begin living out our faith by the power of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So the peace of Christ be with you always. Also so you, those of you who are kind of like sitting next to each other and sharing the peace is not going to be real difficult. <clears throat> but since we can't move around, the rest of you are just going to have to wave to each other. You know, I, this is my one, you know, do the Spock, you know, live long and prosper. <laughs> um, and as we share the peace, we also receive our offering and um, we don't pass the plates yet. Um, so the offering plates are in the back of the church. You may leave your offering as you come in or as you leave. And so um, as we receive our offering, let us join um, our off in our offering song, Come to the Table. Our 
Let us pray. There is no right way to please you through our offerings and actions, O God. Only our open, thankful hearts freely given to you. Accept them and these gifts and bless your servants in our journey of faith as messengers of your love. Amen. And so we then celebrate the Lord's Supper. So holy God, our maker and redeemer and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. And when sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. How in the night in which he is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do <clears throat> and so remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal. As grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. And we pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And so I invite you then to take your communion cups and to peel back the part that has the wafer. And as we receive the wafer, we receive it with the words, the body of Christ given for you. And then we peel back the wine or the grape juice with the words, the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in his grace now and forever. Amen. So let us pray. Wellspring of joy through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So please rise as you are able and let us receive this blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. So go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. So thank you, thank you so much for your presence here and worshiping together and the Sunday school youth and the music and the chicken. So <laughs> at available outside of this place. So let's go. And the Sunday school will be gathering here and then they're going to be going outside to, and have their Sunday fun day. And so we, and then you pick them up wherever you find them. <laughs> I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Let us sing.
Amen.